Following the June 8, 1998 departure of Discovery, the last shuttle mission, the EO-25 crew of Budaran and Musabayev remained on Mir, completing materials experiments and compiling a station inventory. On July 2nd, Roscosmos director Yuri Koptev announced that due to lack of funding to keep Mir active, the station would be deorbited in June 1999. The EO-26 crew of Gennady Pedalica and Sergei Avedev arrived on August 15, 1998 on Soyuz TM-28, alongside physicist Yuri Butarin, who departed with the EO-25 crew 10 days later on Soyuz TM-27. The crew carried out two spacewalks one inside Spectre to reseat some power cables, and another outside set up experiments delivered by Progress M40, which also carried a large amount of propellant to begin, to begin alteration of Mir's orbit in preparation for the station's decommissioning. However, it wasn't to be. Delays to the ISS service module Svesda had led calls for Mir to be kept in orbit past 1999. Roscosmos confirmed that it would not fund Mir past the set deorbit date. The crew of EO-27, Viktor Afanayasev and Jean-Pierre Hagenary and Ivan Bella arrived on Soyuz TM-29 on February 22, 1999. The crew carried out three EVAs to retrieve experiments and deploy a prototype communications antenna on Sephora. On the 1st of June, it was announced that the deorbit of the station would be delayed by six months to allow time to seek alternative funding to keep the station operating. In case that wouldn't happen, the rest of the expedition was spent preparing the station for deorbit. A special analog computer was installed on the core module, and each of the modules, starting with the docking module, was mothballed and sealed off. The crew loaded their results in Soyuz TM-29 and departed Mir on August 28, 1999, ending a run of continuous occupation which lasted just eight days short of ten years. The station's gyrodyne and main computer were shut down in September, leaving Progress M42 to control Mir and refine the station's orbital decay. While Progress kept Mir in orbit, there were plans for private interest to purchase Mir possibly for use as the first orbital television and movie studio. MirCorp was founded to commercialize the station. Space entrepreneur Jeffrey Manber explained that the business model for the venture was fashioned after that of air travel, where Boeing might build planes, but commercial agents such as United or British Airways would sell the tickets. This new private era in space exploration and for Mir was inaugurated on April 4, 2000, when Soyuz TM-30, known as the MirCorp mission, carried two members, Sergei Zelyotin and Alexander Kaleri, to the Mir space station. The two-man crew returned the dormant Mir station to life, located the source of a leak, and repaired it. They also carried out commercial and other research. Zelyotin admitted to being nervous when the hatch door was open, not sure exactly what would be found on the station. While the mission was underway, the management of Mir Corp announced that a number of commercial contracts, including an agreement with NBC and Mark Burnett, 
NBC even began running commercials promoting its upcoming Destination Mirror reality show. On June 16, 2000, on schedule, the first and only Miracorp mission came to an end. It lasted 73 days, and the crew returned in good health. Behind the scenes, Miracorp management and Energia space officials were both surprised at the technical and commercial success of the mission but worried that Mir would soon have to be shut for good. On June 19, 2000, a press conference was held at Russian Mission Control Center, at which the Mir Corp president, along with RC, along with Energy of Head of International Development Alexander Durachin, announced that Denis Tito, a former U.S. space program engineer, was Mir Corp's first citizen explorer. However, the die was cast, and Tito would not visit Mir, but would rather be the first space tourist to the new ISS. Following Soyuz TM-30, Russia was optimistic about Mir's private future, but its commitments to the ISS project left no funding to support the aging station. It would be deorbited. Mir's deorbit was carried out in three stages. The first stage involved waiting for atmospheric drag to reduce the station's orbit to an average of 220 kilometers. While its orbit decayed, Progress M15, a modified version of the Progress M carrying two and a half times more fuel, place of supplies, made the final docking to Mir. The second stage of deorbit was the transfer of the station into a 165 by 220 kilometer orbit. This was achieved with two burns of Progress M15's control engines on March 23, 2001. After a two orbit pause, the third and final stage of the deorbit began with the burn of Progress M15's control engines and main engine lasting over 22 minutes. Mir began atmospheric re-entry soon thereafter, above Fiji. Major destruction of the station began eight minutes later, when most of the unburnt fragments fell into the South Pacific Ocean around six o'clock Universal Time. Mir was a pioneer in human spaceflight and paved the way for the ISS, which orbits the Earth to this day. The Mir space station has been described as a lot of things, a hot mess, 
a disaster, a junk heap, and a waste of money. But it was none of these things. It was an amazing piece of engineering, and it was the site of the end of the Cold War in space, and it's why we can do what we do today in low Earth orbit. All of modern human spaceflight owes a great debt to the station, and its destruction was a loss to the cultural and technological heritage of all human beings.